Um, honestly, I think it was a good time because, you know, a lot of guys need rest. Um, honestly, anytime we can get a little break during the season, I think is good for us to get off our feet and, you know, really key in on our next opponent because, you know, with the Wednesday, Saturday schedule, you know, everything happens kind of fast. So, you know, it's good that we got this time to really spend. And considering that we only play Wyoming this one time, it's good that we got this time to, uh, to really focus in on them. Have a chance to pause and reflect too. I guess I'm sure. I mean, what, what are some of the things y'all been working on this week and, and kind of talking about? Uh, just continuing to work on our zone offense. Um, I think a uh, recent stat came out that we play against the most, like we have the highest percentage of playing against zones in the nation. So, just continuing to work on that and just sharpen up offensively and continue to do what we've been doing defensively and improve, uh, obviously. Wyoming is a, is a tough trip in itself, given you take out their record or anything, just going up to that, that elevation and whatnot. Are you guys prepping for that in any way? I mean, do you think that's going to be a challenging uh, job? Um, it shouldn't be because, you know, we play fast and there's elevation here. So I would think that, you know, nothing really changes. It's just really about the game plan and just sticking to it. You guys seem to be peaking. You want to be peaking in March, obviously. How do you elongate that peak so you continue to play as well as you are now come tournament time? Um, just focusing on the details, really. Um, every day we're finding something new that we have to work on, continue to improve, because obviously we don't play a perfect game. Um, so it's really just really trying to key in on all the little things to really make sure that you know we're focusing on getting better every day. What do you think you guys can get better at? Um, just continuing to uh, get better defensively because, you know, we have been improving this year. But um, as of, the, I guess, the last two or three games, we kind of slipped up a little bit. So it's important that, you know, we continue to focus in on our defense as our offense is continuing to grow as well. It's been a lot of national talk about, you know, if you put Nevada in the Big Ten or the Big 12 or the Pac-12, how would it fare? I mean, do you have questions about how good you guys are just because you haven't played too many top 25 teams or do you have a pretty good feeling of where you are uh, like where you would stack up against the nation's best teams um i feel good with you know where we're at and where we're continuing to go um i don't think we necessarily need to be in those conferences in order to prove that you know we deserve to be talked about on that level um but obviously you know it'll come down to march when we get those matchups of you know how we perform Looking at your left arm, you have a number 22 tattooed on your arm. They obviously announced yesterday Nick Fizikas' is number 22 is going to be retired, mm -hmm. but you get to wear it. Um, I guess, does it mean anything to you to, to be able to wear that number, um, you know, for the next couple of years? And did, did you ever watch Nick play or anything? Um, honestly, I didn't get to watch Nick play uh, here when he was here. I obviously knew him when he got to the NBA, but, you know, it is a blessing that you know, the fans and everybody in the community kind of welcomed me with open arms and allowed me to, you know, and they didn't, you know, they didn't cause a big uproar over the fact, you know, that I wanted to wear 22. And, you know, it's a blessing that, you know, they're going to continue to let me wear 22. Um, so, you know, shout out to Nick Fizekas. That's, that's a big time. You know, that's every player's dream is to hopefully one day get their number in the rafters. Why is 22 special to you? Obviously, if it's tattooed on you, it has to have something. Um, so my mom's birthday is October 22nd, so that's one reason. And another reason is that my dad's number was 22 when he was growing up. And also, it's just it's always kind of been a number that no one's really had. And, you know, for kind of the reasons like this, um, I chose 22 because no one else really had it, and there wouldn't really be any issues when it came time for me to pick a number. So, What kind of stands out about Wyoming and the challenge they'll pose? Um, they're slow pace. They walk the ball up a lot. And then, you know, considering that we want to play fast, um, we're just trying to figure out ways to speed them up and get them out of their comfort zone and, you know, speed the game up. And hopefully we can do that. Why have you guys tried to do that? Because you were about 200th in tempo about maybe a month ago. And then over maybe the last month, you guys have been like in the top 50. Why, why have you guys started to play faster? And how much has that helped your offense? Um, it's really, we're more focusing on getting to the basket, um, obviously. Uh, in the beginning of the year, we shot a lot of threes. So it really seemed like our tempo was slow, but really we're just we we're playing inefficiently. But now we're starting to play to the rim, play inside out. And, you know, it's leaving us more wide open for threes. And obviously we finish pretty well at the basket. Has it hit you yet that you guys have hit this point in the season where there's less than 10 Mountain West games left until March? Uh, yeah, Must does a good job of reminding us every day that, you know, the season's coming to a close and it's not time to relax. You know, it's time for us, you know, to ramp it up a bit, actually, that, you know, we have a lot of seniors on this team and it's their last few games of their college career. So um, it's really important that we realize that and seize the moment because, you know, 
you don't get opportunities like this very often. So, you know, we just have to jump on it and be appreciative of it. How important is it going to be to bring your own energy on Saturday, you know, to have that Lawler crowd coming off that uh, big win against New Mexico? Um, it's just important that we continue to play for each other. You know, like, obviously every day we play a home game, we play for our fans, but at the end of the day we have to play for the other 15 guys that are sitting on our bench, you know, including staff and all that. So it's just really important that, you know, we stick together and really just play as hard as we can for each other so we can continue this special thing that we have going so far. Any more questions for Jazz? Thank you. Thank you. How have you guys utilized uh, the, the week off? I guess not off, but you know what I mean, no game. <laughs> uh, just practice, trying to get better in all areas of the game. And, and um, you know, we've had good practices this week and have a couple more and then get on the plane to Laramie. What's been, uh, what's been the emphasis? Is it more on you guys or more on prepar uh, preparing? Uh, both. I mean, I think, you know, because we've had, I'd say out of the, Two hour practices, an hour on Wyoming, and, and an hour on our, ourselves trying to get better. Yeah, but it's been mostly just continuing to, to craft the zone offense. Is that kind of your biggest emphasis at this point? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, maybe that's Jazz's perspective, but we're, we're doing, you know, we're breaking things down. We're working on our lobs. We're working on our three point shooting. We're working on driving kicks against man and zone. Um, so I'd say just a little bit of everything. Certainly playing well going into this. Uh, did you welcome a, a game a game week off, or would you, would you have rather just kept the thing going? No, I'm like the players. I I have player mentality. I'd rather play. I hate practice just like they do. Fair enough. You guys do tend to peak at the end of every year under your tenure. What do you think is the key to have a team grow uh, throughout the year and not get stale or stagnant at a certain level? Yeah, th I think it's. Uh, you know, a bunch of different. One, you got to keep your team engaged, which is hard during the, you know, during this particular time or even two weeks ago. I think now we're starting to get more towards the end. You can kind of feel a, a, a second breath, a second life in practice and everything else. Our practice has been great. I mean, outside people that have come in and watched us think it's like a training camp all the way back in, in, in October with how hard and how engaged guys are, and they're using their voices more right now than they have all year. Um, talking better on defense than we have all year. Having said that, we got a really tough schedule. Um, you know, four road games, three home games. Quality of opponents are really tough. Um, so we'll see what happens. How do you keep them engaged? How do you keep them, you know, focused? Try to change things up. Try to have, uh, you know, we might do something today, Valentine's thing with them, and and um, you know, just try to keep from having boredom. Um, you know, if the assistant coaches come in with the same drills, I get bored. So I think it's important to keep things fresh as possible. People want to come to work. People want to get better. Um, having been an assistant coaches at other places, like if we do the same thing every day, like it's, it's not fun. I mean, so we've added a whole bunch of new offense this week. I don't know how much we'll use on Saturday. Um, but to, to go out and skeleton for 30 minutes or dry run your offense if it's a continuity ball screen that you do an entire game. I don't know how you go through practice. So we like to add things, add wrinkles. Um, it's just helped us, you know, keep guys more engaged, I guess. What kind of stands out about Wyoming and, you know, obviously having a rough year? Justin James, two words. I mean, he's a, you know, he's a really hard cover. Uh, he's doing a great job for him at the point guard position. They have a shooter on the wing, Hendricks, who's been hurt uh, for much of conference play. And he's he's a dead eye shooter. Um, they got some good young wings. Um, they got a backup guard who's a really good athlete. Hunter Thompson can really shoot the ball. He's a pick and pop big. Naughton's a big body. So I think you know they have they have a lot of good pieces. Coach Edwards does a great job. He's, he's got a great staff. Um, they're always well prepared. I thought they played. Utah State really good last night through 36 minutes, and, and uh, Utah State made a run at the end of the game, and, and, uh, and it was their home game, and they had a good crowd. And, and, uh, but Wyoming you know, won their last home game, and, and um, it's never easy to play there. It's never easy to get there. You guys have been playing so much faster over the last month than you did really the first six weeks of the year. What, what has been the biggest difference in being able to play with the pace that you wanted to, that you weren't able to do? Yeah, I don't know why we kind of played slower. I think we saw zones and we just kind of backed the ball up a little bit more and, and uh, played high school Harry with the ball. But, but now we're saying to the guys, like, no walk-ups, don't walk the ball up the floor. 
um, push the ball, play with pace, have our defense create offense for us. All those things, I think we're just doing a little bit better job in each of those areas. We're not walking the ball up. We are advanced passing it instead of uh, you know, using the dribble to get the ball across half court. Our wings are running harder. Now our bigs are starting to rim run. So I think just a lot of the things that we've talked about you know, are starting to sink in because we do have some new guys. You know, obviously Trey Porter's playing a lot better of late. Um, so he and Jordan Brown are rim running better than maybe they were earlier in the year. Um, you know, guys like Jazz that sat out a year, I think they, they continue to, to play at a little bit faster pace as well. How have you continued to stress that on the road you're going to get everyone's best crowd to that guys need to come out strong and just bring their own energy? I mean, I think our guys know now. Um, I mean, I was watching games last night, and it's like, oh, they got about 2,000 less than when we were there, and they're going to have about 4,000 more when we are there. And and our guys know it too. I mean, so I think it's, you know, when you're a good team, you have added responsibilities and added obstacles, and, and um, that's where we're at. And you have to look forward to it. You have to embrace it. It doesn't make it easier. You know, it's, it's difficult, but um, – We've been dealing with it all year. Why do you think you guys have been so good despite the spotlight and not letting that drag you down? Because you talked a lot about how you guys were embracing it and you were using it on social media to promote the university and that sometimes that could backfire on other schools, obviously, it hasn't with you guys. I think that's a, you know, a, a, a great question. It's a philosophically, um, you know, I stated like two ways, either – push it out there and let everybody know what's being said or hide it. And I think by us pushing it out and embracing it, I actually think it relieved our guys a little bit because they're going to read it anyhow. Um, and we talk about, hey, we do have a target. We do have a name, ne a number next to our name. Um, we are bringing the school um, a lot of exposure nationally. And I think now our guys, it just kind of bounces off them. Like it's, it's because it's talked about so much. And I mean, I don't, I can't even keep up with our own social media. Like, I don't know what's been written in the last 40 minutes, but probably something new. Um, and I think there's just so much out there now. Our guys are just like whatever. It's just part of what goes on on a daily basis. School announced yesterday they're going to retire Nick Fizikas' number. I know you briefly coached him. I guess what made him such a special player, and, and do you have any fond memories of your time with him? Uh, with the yeah, I mean, I feel. Um, I'm real happy. I mean, I sent him an email, um, you know, throwing the idea at him and, and kind of asking, do you have a break? And um, he's the, probably the most unique player I've ever coached because he's not fast, he's not athletic, um, but he's got the softest touch. He's got understands offensive angles better than anyone I've ever been around. Not a very good defender, um, but a really smart player, an incredible person. Uh, and, I mean, I only had him for, you know, a, a brief time with the, with the Bighorns, but everywhere you go since the announcement's been made, everybody, I mean, he's as popular as any player that's ever played here. And I think it just adds to the night that, this is going to be, I mean, it's going to be in a crazy, wild, cool environment. And I'm just, I'm, you know, I think all of us are, you know, from Doug to the president's office to Rory to Chad, the guys that have been around when he played here, I think everybody's like really looking forward to the night. And well deserved. I saw you guys did a, uh, a self scout and you mentioned it, it created good dialogue within the program. I'm curious what dialogue it did create and what you maybe learned or just. Uh what that consisted of? I mean, we always talk about self-scouts and what other people are thinking about us and where our holes are. And, and um, you know, it was awesome because there was an article the other day where opposing coaches um, said that, you know, we don't have a point guard and, um, you know, we take bad shots. And there was a whole bunch of stuff. It was in The Athletic. So it's awesome because we can like pin that up in our locker room and we can try to figure out which coach said that about our team. So thanks for the scouting report. Seems like there's been a lot of talk of late of how would Nevada do in the Big 12 or the Big 10 or the Pac-12. Like, do you know how good your team is? Do you know whether you guys can go out and beat top five teams in the nation? Or is that I know we'd win the Pac-12, 
I mean, I don't have any question about that. I mean, we played two on the road, one in a neutral. I would have loved to have gotten two home games against Pac-12. Um, so I don't have any doubt that we're we were the best team if we were in the Pac-12. It's a press conference, so you can go ahead and I said it. Um, you know, I can only compare to the conferences that we've played this year, and obviously be, because we played, you know, three games against Pac-12, and Utah's playing well. They're well coached. It's a hard place to play at. USC's talented, and, um, you know, Arizona State on any given night can beat anybody in the Pac-12 as well. I'm just curious if you know exactly how good you guys are just because you haven't played outside Arizona State, a top 25 team. Or I mean, you've been around basketball so much, you know what a good team looks like. Do you feel like this team can beat anybody in the nation if it goes Yeah, out? I mean, I, I, you, know, I, 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 you know, I look at last year's Cincinnati team. Like, they're really freaking good. And we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. And, and uh, Texas was really good last year. And, and we have the nucleus of, of our team back, but we're a lot better than we were last year. I've stated that. Um, you know, so I would, I mean, I can't answer other than just who we've played and, and that I watch a lot of games at night. And, you know, I watched two Big Ten games last night. And, you know, I mean, we can we can play with those guys. Why, why do you think you're better than last year? Just size. You know, I think everybody, you know, it's great when you ask friends and stuff and people like, you know, when Jordan Caroline's playing the center and, and he's guarding Mo Bamba, like, I mean, that's Mariah, my daughter, can tell me, like, you know, we're missing six inches or whatever, seven, you know, inches. So we got we got bigger. We got we have more depth, um, although I don't use it all the time, but we do have more depth at, at our exposal. Um, and and then, then even our core nucleus, those three guys all have another year experience, so you should be better from that aspect. And Cody Martin's now... You know, last year he was kind of thrust into this point guard position out of desperation because Lindsey had played so many minutes the first half of the year last year at the point. Now Cody's used to playing that position, and, you know, he wakes up knowing he's the point guard, whereas last year he was a 4, 3, 2, 1, kind of all over the map. So I just think from a consistency standpoint, we're in a better spot with roles as well. How important is it to have that bulletin board material and to keep things uber competitive given that you're not seeing ranked opponents every week? And you no, we love the bulletin board material. It's awesome. Like, keep it coming. Um, I hope there's some more unnamed scouting reports. Those are awesome when they're in print. Kind of using that, I guess, maybe as somewhat of a motivation. Or, but what else do you think that you your guys really need to focus in on these next few weeks? Amount less I mean, it's, it's going to be it's, – it's, I mean, these – I keep stating it like it's really hard to win a game. It's gonna, you know, you, you go on the road and um, just travel tomorrow is not going to be easy. You know, it's a it's a, <laughs> it's a long day when you practice, get to the airport an hour and a half early, two hour flight, two hour bus ride. Got to try to figure out a way to eat. Do we go shoot tomorrow night after a seven hour travel day when you've already had a shoot around in the morning. There's like a lot of little things that add up and, and then you got to check in your hotel room and and by the time that happens, it's 1030 at night already and that, and oh, by the way, there's an hour time change and you lose an hour. So um, every game's hard. Every, every team is talented. Every team can have a big f night and teams play better against us than they do normally. I sat down with JC today uh, and he said since becoming a father, it's allowed him to play a lot more freely because he knows he's got something much more important than the game of basketball in his life now. Have you noticed that with him? And I wonder if you could just speak on how becoming a father just changes your perspective in terms of the game. Yeah, I think being becoming a father changes everybody's perspective. Um, but with Jordan, I mean, I, you can see the love that he has uh, for JC. He comes out after games sometimes and doesn't even shower. He's still in his uniform. Um, and to see the way they interact is really cool. And, and um you know, he takes fatherhood, like, really, really seriously. Um, he loves his kid. He talks about him on bus rides, and um, he's always FaceTiming. Uh, so it's really cool to see the relationship as it's even developing now. And, you know, the big key is how do we get a piece of paper in front of J.C. and get him to sign a scholarship as soon as it's legally – we can do it per the NCAA, get him and King Oliver, and we'll be set. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys.